Wait, you're telling me this isn't Linda Hamilton's most iconic 1984 role? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my 2020 13 Nights of Halloween series, today I'm going to be talking about the 1984 supernatural folk horror film, Children of the Corn. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, ranked lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Children of the Corn stars Peter Horton, Linda Hamilton, and John Franklin, and was directed by Fritz Kirsch. Based on Stephen King's 1977 short story of the same name, it tells the story of a couple who find themselves trapped in a seemingly abandoned town, only to encounter a cult of murderous children. It's always amazed me just how ingrained in pop culture Stephen King's stories are. Even as a kid, before I started reading his books or watching any of the movies, I was already aware of several of his stories and characters. And so there was always something sort of mysterious and omnipresent about Stephen King when I was young. As I got older and started to experience his stories firsthand, that mystique turned to intrigue and excitement. At this point, I've read and or seen most of his stuff, but every now and then I come across a story that still holds that horror mystique, and Children of the Corn is one of those stories. Creepy kids in a cornfield have always been a horror concept in my mind, but I've actually never read the short story, nor have I seen this movie before. My only first time watch of this year's 13 Nights of Halloween. So because this movie's become such a big horror pop culture reference, I already knew the basic gist of the story without ever having actively sought it out. But even so, I was pretty impressed by it. Like many of Stephen King's creations, it can be viewed on a number of levels. At its most superficial, it's a very classically styled horror movie. It takes everyday average characters and puts them in what initially seems like a mundane and semi-familiar situation, driving across country and stopping in a small town. But mundane soon turns to insane as they're stalked, split up, and terrorized. And of course, since it's Stephen King, we can dig a bit deeper and see a cautionary tale about the dangers of blind faith. I was actually surprised by how solidly this movie started. I think the opening sequence is probably the best part of the movie, hooking you with some immediate action and establishing a bit of a mysterious situation you're dying to know more about but things do slip a bit from there. I wouldn't say the movie ever really gets bad in terms of the story, but it certainly feels unfocused at points. A good chunk of the second act really drags, and it gets frustratingly repetitive, mostly due to a certain character I'll talk about in a minute. But in spite of some issues there, I actually found myself pretty engaged in the story throughout. One of the biggest things that helped that engagement was the atmosphere. I had heard some not-so-flattering things about this movie over the years, but I thought it did a pretty good job of presenting the story. It's obviously very low-budget and has that B-movie feel that almost all of the 80s King adaptations have, but aside from some cheesy special effects and a few moments of unintentional humor, I think this movie does a great job with the atmosphere. The production design especially was really good. Whether we're talking the deserted streets of Gatlin, the dusty, vacant farmhouses and town buildings, or the surprisingly ominous cornfield, all the locations feel right for the story. And of course, the atmosphere comes from more than just the locations. The music perfectly sets the tone with its eerie children's chorus sound. In fact, when I was watching this, I was struck by just how similar this theme song is to Pet Cemeteries. The main theme, not the Ramon song. But where it has always stuck out as melodramatic sounding in Pet Cemetery, it really fits the atmosphere here. This movie isn't scary, but it manages to be creepy without actually showing us all that much. I thought it was interesting how almost all of the violence occurs off camera, but is implied to the viewer. We see blood spurting onto a suitcase or on an onlooker's face, but we never actually see the kills or dismemberment. And in that sense, it's very similar to the approach that Hitchcock took in Psycho, where I'm sure people are convinced that they saw things in this movie that they never actually saw. For a movie with so many kids, I'm surprised by how decent the acting was overall. Most of the kid roles were bit parts, but the few who did have more significant roles were surprisingly not irritating. 
Malachi was a little bit over the top, but that was certainly overshadowed by the super creepy, unsettling performance by John Franklin as Isaac. He was perfect for that role, and was actually in his early 20s, despite looking about 13. The adult characters were okay. A barely pre-Terminator Linda Hamilton was fine here as a bit of a voice of reason, but she doesn't really have all that much to do. Peter Horton's performance is fine too, but the character of Bert was just so frustrating to me. He makes dumb decisions one after another throughout, and it got to the point where I almost couldn't stand watching the character. I mean, I know horror movies aren't exactly known for having the most intelligent characters, but come on. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the production design. Sometimes you can have movies with intricately designed sets and tons of detail and things to look at, and other times sparse dusty sets are exactly what you need, and this was one of those times. It might not initially seem like a movie to gush over the production design of, but it works so well. Gatlin's supposed to essentially be a ghost town, and it feels like it, infiltrated and accented by remnants of the other major location in the film, the cornfield. Again, a cornfield isn't exactly the most luxurious filming location, but it's pretty perfect in its isolating claustrophobia. The second pro is the story. Like I said before, this is actually one of the Stephen King shorts I haven't read, so I can't comment on how closely the story sticks to the source material, but it's a very effective and straightforward creepy story. It starts off a bit mysterious and throws you for a couple loops as you watch, but ultimately follows a fairly predictable classic horror path and I don't think that's a bad thing. There are a few strange moments and a handful of times where it feels like they just forget to continue a story thread, but the core plot was pretty good. On the con side, the biggest issue was definitely the dumb character decisions. Most characters make a few questionable choices here and there, but Bert absolutely takes the cake. No matter how many times Vicky suggests that they just keep driving or leave a location, he insists on being the stereotypical horror movie idiot who has to stay and investigate. He just has to walk into a cornfield in the middle of nowhere after finding a murder victim. He repeatedly decides it's a good idea to walk around in clearly abandoned buildings. He's the one who decides that he and Vicky should split up in an unfamiliar and visibly creepy town after just being told about Isaac. Even the very end of this movie, which is kind of funny in its awkward abruptness, at least Vicky finally puts her foot down to stop Bert's idiocy. The second con is a minor one, but I've at least got to mention the special effects. Some of the practical effects were fine, but there are definitely some pretty goofy and rough effects towards the end of the movie, with the appearance of he who walks behind the rose. I can't give this movie too much crap over this though, because it had a very low budget. It's just kind of funny to watch those scenes now. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Children of the Corn or any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Children of the Corn three out of five paws. This was a bit of a pleasant surprise after all the negative things I've heard about it over the years. It had some issues, but if it wasn't for Bert and his infuriatingly dumb decisions, I actually would have gone three and a half paws on this. I would recommend Children of the Corn to fans of 80s horror or anybody who likes creepy kids movies. Even better if you like creepy kids movies from the 80s. This is pretty much a B movie, but if you can look past that, this movie's actually got a creepy and very classically told horror story. You'll probably want to hold off on watching until after you've gone through your corn maze for this Halloween season though. If you liked Children of the Corn, I would recommend Pet Cemetery. It's another 80s Stephen King adaptation that prominently features a fairly creepy kid and a very ominous outdoor location, and I still can't get over how similar the main themes of those two movies sound. If you want another good creepy kid movie, you might want to check out The Omen. Damien and Isaac have slightly different origins, but they're both incredibly unsettling characters. And if you like the cult-like elements of this movie, you should watch Midsummer. Definitely not as straightforward of a story, but it too features a natural setting for its primary cult location and involves memorable sacrifices. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Children of the Corn? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie that features an abandoned town? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. 
All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.